Okay, we can now proceed. Thank you. Could you please confirm you can see my screen? Okay, exactly. So we are going to proceed looking at uh, what the logical framework is. At this point in time, I do. I'm, I'm fully convinced that we know how to go about developing the result framework. Who can confirm we know how to develop the the result framework? Can I have someone to confirm that indeed we can design a result framework? It's that simple. It's not very difficult. Or what's key for you now is to understand the concept. What am I supposed to put in the in the sales when developing the result framework? The other name for the result framework is called the strategic framework. Many people they don't call it as a result framework. They will prefer say strategic framework. So immediately someone says strategic framework then what should come in your mind is the results framework so today i don't want to talk much about the result framework because we did cover that so i'll now just move in and we start discussing what a logical framework is just like we had defined what uh, a result framework is the same definition also applies to this but the only difference here is that the result framework is only focused on the results. It's not concerned about the inputs. It's not concerned about the processes. The processes it means activities. Others, they don't write as activities. They will write processes. So immediately they write processes. Then you should know that what, what they are talking about are the results. So the logical framework, the other name, as you can see on my screen, is called the log flow matrix 4x4. For this one, it just shows the linear linkage between the inputs, the, out, the activities, the outputs, the outcomes, and the impacts. In other words, we are trying to show... Oh, yes, yes, I can... I feel like... I, sorry, sorry. Um, you can proceed. Someone wants to speak? No one. Okay. So, this framework will just show that chronological sequence... Of, uh, of how things are happening from the start to the end. Could you please confirm you can hear me? Oh, okay, so someone interrupted my internet. I'm just connected from uh, um, using hotspot. So if someone calls, it means the internet gets interrupted. So this one is shows how things flows, starting from the resources that we have, going into the activities or rather the actions then from the actions we are going to have the immediate result that we are going to see right after implementing that activity right after that action is done i should be able to see something that's what it means for an output something that you are able to see immediately after doing something then that is going to be called an output then an outcome is something that will come in the middle because this one now talks about changing behavior. If you sensitize someone, that's an output. Because it's something that you can say right after this meeting, I can say that I've taught them how to I've taught them how to go about uh, designing a logical framework. But an outcome now comes into asking. Do they let know how to do it? Are they doing it? That's an outcome. So it's not something that you can measure on a daily basis. Or it's not something that you can measure after an hour. It's something that you can measure or it's a result that you see after a period of time. Depending on the problem, it might be six months, it might be a year, it might be five years, it might be ten years. And that's what an outcome is. Then the impact is simply... Your goal, what you've intended to achieve as a project, that's an impact. If your intended goal is to reduce... Hello, I can hear you. I can hear you. You can go ahead and talk. Yes, I can hear you.
Okay, sure. No problem. Just remind me so that I can uh, now distinguish. Okay. So here, as you can see from my notes here, it's like the logical framework summarizes what the project intends to do and how. It summarizes the key assumption, key assumptions. So the only thing that we are introducing in this framework, which is going to be different from the result framework, is about the key assumptions here. We have to state the assumptions that are likely to affect my activities. I have to state the assumptions that that may affect my outputs. I have to state the assumptions that may affect my outcome. And also there could be assumptions that, that are supposed to be stated that may affect my goal. That's the only new thing that we are introducing in the logical framework. The other thing still remains the same. And this is the reason why I said that. Uh, for the result framework, logic model and the logical framework, you can only pick one and, and work with one. You can't pick them at the same time because it's more like you are, just doing a, uh, you are just doing it over and over and over again. Same things. It, it will be work duplicate and we don't want to do that and that's why you can only pick one but for the conceptual framework like i've been saying it's non-negotiable you have to do it so in strict terms it appears as a four by four that's how this log frame appears it seems as if it's a square four by four we are going to look at it as we start designing it and we read this table starting from the bottom going to the top so don't mix up things because if you mix up if you mix up things, you may end up having a, a different interpretation. But if you start from the bottom, it means you are starting from the inputs. Then inputs you move on to activities and you move on until you reach your goal. So you start reading this board, I mean this logical framework matrix four by four from the bottom going up. We have control at input, activity, and output. Before I can explain this point, I'll pose this question to you. Why is it that in a project, we've got control at, out, at input level, at activity level, and, at, and at, at output level, but we don't have control at outcome and impact level? Can I hear uh, people say something uh, over this? Yes, I can clearly get you. Okay. Okay, that sounds great. That sounds great. But before I can say something there, can I have someone also to say something? Why they feel that we, why they feel that we can only have control at input activity and that and at, at output level, but we can't have a control beyond that. Can I have people, Madam Banda, please, you can go ahead. Madam Banda, can you hear me? Okay, 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 okay. Mr. Is it Mr. Samson? Mr. Manarila, sir. You can tell us something. Confirm you can hear me. Yes, okay. Uh, you, get, you, you can proceed, sir, with your answer. My, uh, my question is that, why is it that we can only have control at output activity? And, uh, I mean, why, why is it that 
as a project, we can only have control at input level, at activity level, and at output level. I can hear you, so I can proceed. Mr. Manalila, I'm waiting. If you don't have something to say, you can let me know so that we can proceed. Okay. Let's, yes, I can hear you, sir. Okay, we, we can move on. So the reason why we don't have a control at outcome and at impact is uh, because that um, when you look at Im outcome, we are talking about changing behavior. I'll give a basic example. When we distribute condom, that's an activity. Condom distribution is an activity. Then the output will be that People have got access to condoms or people have been given condoms. Now an outcome will come in, which will be talking about are people using condoms. So us, our control, will end at output where we, we are able to tell that people have been given condoms. But at a point when they are using condoms, it's not us. They'll make a personal decision whether to use a condom or not. So whatever that comes after the output, we as a project, we do not have any control over it. It will just happen because we've done something before. And also it's possible that we could have done something before, but that thing that we wanted to happen may not happen because we do not have control over that. And that's why monitoring will end at output level where we've got control. Because that output is something that I'm likely to see right after finishing this class. I can say that people have been taught on the log flow matrix. That's an output. But the outcome, it will now be up to that person who's been taught. Do they really know how to, do, how to go about it? That's an outcome. So I don't have control there. I do agree that I may have control indirectly because I've taught them and I've shown them how to go about filling out the log flow matrix. But the question is that do they understand and are they able to do it on their own? So doing it on their own now, it will, it will be up to them for personal, it, it will be personal dedication and practice. That will, practice is going to make them perfect. So that's the reason why our control will only end at um, output. Then so this is how the overall log flow matrix appears like if you remember from the beginning it was like it appears like a four by four matrix so this is what we are talking about so here we've got inputs so you know that inputs we are talking about resources in terms of human capital in terms of infrastructure in terms of machinery in terms of monetary laboratories and so on and so forth then on activities we know that we are talking about those specific actions what are we going to be doing those are activities then outputs we know that the thing the very thing that we are likely to see after doing an activity that is going to be an output then the purpose here it means an outcome because it's falling in between outputs and the goal it means an outcome what are we likely to see in a long run? then the goal it means that thing that we want to subsist after doing all the necessary actions, what we want to remain, where we want to be after 10 years, that's a goal. Then here on top, as you can see, there is this thing called measurable indicators. In brackets, OVI. OVI, it means objectively verifiable indicators. So here, we are going to put in an indicator. An indicator is something that is going to help us to measure whether or not we are making progress. For instance, if I say my indicator is going to be HIV prevalence, then it means after six months, for instance, 
I'm going to collect data, then I'm going to compute and report on my indicator. Actually, HIV prevalence has reduced from 14.2 to 10% now. So that's an indicator. How are we going to know that we've achieved it? We need to measure our indicator. The means of verification is talking about where are we going to get the information for us to be able to measure the indicator. So if we are talking about HIV prevalence, for instance, we have to ask ourselves where are we going to get it? the information for the numerator and the information for the numerator if we are computing this indicator as a percentage. Because for a percentage, it means there must be a numerator on top and there must be a denominator at the bottom. So where are we going to get that information? Are we going to do our own survey? Are we going to get the information from the monitoring records? Are we going to get information from central statistics? Are we going to get information from the police? Are we going to get the information from the clinics? So we have to specify here as per indicator. Then the last column here is talking about the important assumptions. So under the go here, I'll put in an assumption which may affect my go here. Then even here under the purpose, I'm going to put in an assumption that may affect my outcome here. Then here, under the activities, I'm also going to put in the assumption which may affect my activities. Okay, let me just accept someone. Someone wants to join. So let's say the activity was uh, the activity was that we are going to distribute condoms in Vubu district. So the assumption will be that the village admins will allow us to distribute condoms. Otherwise, if the village admin, if the village admins in Vubu district have not given us a green light to proceed with the condom distribution, then it means that our activities will be halted. We will not proceed with an activity. So that's a key assumption. We are saying that village admins from Vubi district will allow condom distribution. That's, a, that's an assumption. So it means without these people allowing us to distribute condoms, it means we cannot proceed with our, our activity of condom distribution. So that's what we mean when we say important assumptions. It will be that assumption that will affect your activities, an assumption that is likely to affect your outputs, an assumption that may affect your outcome, which is a purpose, an assumption which may affect your goal. So what I was just talking about is this. Narrative summary. Okay, someone wants to join. Let me just give them. Okay. So when I take you back, you've seen what there is. The narrative summary. Yeah, you should master these things. Narrative summary. Measurable indicators, means of verification. Narrative summary will be, what does the project want to achieve? We know that there will be the output, there will be the outcome, there will be the goal. We are going to have the activities and the inputs. Then, objectively verifiable indicators, which I've talked about already. How can we tell if we have achieved it? It means we have to compute that particular indicator. So an indicator can be a count, an indicator can be a count, it can be a percentage, it can be a ratio. For instance, there is that indicator which is teacher to pupil ratio. It's an indicator that you can keep on tracking over time. You are just going to be reporting on that indicator. The means of verify means means of uh, verification. Where can we get the information that will tell us this? Where are we going to get the information for us to measure the indicator? I've talked about this thing. Assumptions. What else must happen if it is to succeed? I was just giving an, an example. That if we intended to go and distribute condoms in Vubu district, we are assuming that the village admins there who allow condom distribution. Otherwise, if they say no, then it means we cannot proceed with our activity as a project. I'll invite questions here before we can proceed. I'll invite questions before... Yes, I can hear you. Okay.
Mm -hmm. okay. No, 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 not necessarily that way, but you are almost there. I do agree that prior to the initiation of each project of a program or a policy, we need to collect, we need to do what we, what is called an, a baseline evaluation so that we know the status of the problem at, at that particular point in time. So that as we move on disseminating our activities, we are going now to be measuring are we making progress or not. So that progress is going to be measured. What we've achieved now, then we do a comparison with the baseline. If the baseline holds that uh, HIV stood at 14.4%, then our goal is to reduce HIV prevalence. Then two years, uh, two years after our implementation, we've collected information on this indicator, which is HIV prevalence. We've computed. Now we have it at 10%. Then we, then we can then we can uh, we, we can assume no not in fact even assuming then we can confidently say that we are making project as a as a prog uh, as a, i mean we are making progress as a project because hiv prevalence has been on uh, has been declining over time before the project it was at 14 percent now it is at 10 percent then we can confidently say that we are making progress as a project so the indicators that we are going to put here may not be necessarily your baseline, but I do agree with you that there's going to be a table where you're going to be, especially when you start dealing with your reporting templates. If you are going to be reporting on your indicators, then you are going to have baseline. Someone wants to join. Let me just quickly allow them to come in. So you are uh, in your reporting templates. Oh my God, what's happening? To, okay. In your reporting templates, you are going to have a column which will be baseline then you are going to put the numbers as collected at a point when you did your baseline then here you are going to put in now the actual status what's the status of that indicator after three months so you are going to be putting then from there you do a comparison this indicator was 14.2 but now it's at seven percent then you know as a project that we are moving in the right direction but if the indicator that you had intended to reduce, which is HIV prevalence, and as I'm referring to it in my example, holds 14% at the baseline. Then two years after implementation, you've collected information, you've measured that indicator, now it's giving you 18%. Then you must know as a project that we are not doing fine. How come? Our goal is to reduce HIV prevalence, but HIV prevalence has been increasing, then it could be, the problem, it could be the problem has changed completely and you are not capturing your pro the problem in your project. Or maybe it could be you are doing it wrongly. Instead of you maybe at a point of testing, you use those tools that they use. Maybe it could be you are using the tools that are already infected with HIV. So instead of reducing, HIV is now increasing. So here... The object, I mean, the indicators that we are going to have are not necessarily your baseline indicators, but it will be that indicator that you want to keep. It, it will be that indicator that you want to be tracking over time. Over time, is it changing? Is it increasing or reducing? So that you are able to make decision internally as an institution. Have I answered you, sir? Thank you. So... The indic uh, your indicator reference sheet. Ah, uh, sorry, now I've gone to the indicator reference sheet. <laughs> so the, your logical framework matrix will look like this. Just like I said that you lead this table starting from the bottom, going to the top. So this table here is the adap adapted from this guy, which is common nineteen nineteen hundred eighty seven page page two hundred and fifty two. So here when we talk about the inputs, we are talking about nature and level of resources necessary, cost, plan, the starting date. Then when we go to outputs, we are talking about the magnitude of outputs, planned completion date, purpose, end of project status, goal, measurement of goal achievement. So here, what we are going to put here, 
these are going to be our indicators we are going to to be tracking these indicators and we are going to be reporting on these indicators so this is not actually an example i just want to quickly go through this one again there is an example coming the means of verification we said that where are we going to be getting the information for us to measure the indicator as you can say yes litany sources of information methods used then important assumptions what else must happen for us to achieve the goal what else must happen for us to achieve our outcome what else must happen for us to see the outputs so now this is now the actual example let me just close oh god so this is an actual example of how of how a log frame 4 by 4 matrix looks like so this was a project on the wells for africa project i'm sure we are moving together class so the first thing here is talking about the inputs but when you check very well here you see that under the same tab here you see that their inputs and their activities also purchase construction material could this be an input or an activity can i hear can i hear from you class purchase construction material could this be an output or an activity it's an activity right exactly exactly you are right it's an activity and again at the same point it will act like an input for something to happen for us going out to go and purchase or procure that's an activity then what we are going to procure again will act as resources for us to do another activity do we agree Let, 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 let's be interacting class let's be interacting class so that uh, we make this class good okay then basic hygiene workshops this is an activity but there are times where the activities will come on their own and the inputs will be on their own that would be good so you can just create another row you can just create another row at the bottom here which is going to be inputs then where there are inputs here you put your activities so that you label them when you talk about money then it means you need to, to to put in the exact amount that you need as a project for that particular activity if purchasing construction material will cost you 1.7 million us dollars then you have to put 1.7 us uh, usd you don't have to show the breakdown no just put in the exact amount not the breakdown the breakdown will come in your work plan where now you are going to you are going to describe everything in details then can i have someone to read what we are going to have as outputs can i have someone to read uh, outputs outputs oh yeah yeah you you, you are right you under the narrative summary okay so let's let's dissect this do we agree that this could be outputs or outcomes or a goal let's now dissect them one by one construction water well could this be an, an activity or an output or what Yeah. exactly so how can we convert this into an uh, into an uh, output yeah. exactly just you've put it you've put it so well all well constructed as simple as that are we together exactly we move on to the purpose which is uh, the outcome please class we are about uh, let me just check the people that are connected we are about the nine of us here so everyone should be contributing here so that i know that people are following 
not only two people. Please, let's contribute. That's why it's, it's always good that you're having a class with people that are already working because we are going to to get examples from different sectors, from different experience, so that even all of us, we can learn from one another. So let's be, let's just be opening up, we share ideas, then we move on. That's the beauty about this course. It's about sharing ideas. So we move on, we move to the purpose. Reduction of autoborn disease. Do we agree that this can be a purpose or aim or an outcome? Reduction of autoborn disease. Okay, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do agree that this is an outcome, but is that a justification where we are saying reduction of water bone disease is an outcome? Is there anyone who can give it a try? Okay, can proceed. The, okay. Okay. I agreed, agreed. But my question, my follow-up question is that why is it that reduction of waterborne disease is an outcome and not an output? So in other words, okay. Okay. Great, that sounds great. So in other words, I was trying to, sorry. The program here is the Wales for Africa project. Then the goal for this project is to improve the health of the villagers in rural communities. Then this project, by providing quality water exactly so here as we can see from the outputs that wells have been constructed then people having access to improved water so then the the, the outcome here the the thing that we are going to get after constructing the balls then after people now having access to improved water is that there will be reduction in waterborne diseases which used to torment people in the rural communities then because We've seen that there's a reduction in the autoborne diseases, which is to hamper the health of the villagers. Now, it means this outcome is now taking us to our goal, which is we can now see an improved in the health of the villagers. So reduction of autoborne disease is an outcome in the sense that it's not happening immediately, something that will happen after a period of time. We can't just say that because we've constructed the balls and there's a reduction in autoborne diseases. No. It's something that has to be observed over a period of time and hence we can call that to be an outcome. So we should be able to draw a line between an output and an outcome so that we don't confuse things. An output is something that you see immediately after doing your activity. I'll give an example here. Construction of water wells. Then an output will be that water wells have been constructed. That's something that we are going to see immediately. Then another thing that that's an output. Then another thing that we are going to see immediately is that people are now drawing those water. I mean, people are now drawing water from those wells. It's something that we can see right after finishing. We can tell the villagers now. We can. You can start drawing water from here. We can see it right after doing an activity. But an outcome is something that will happen in a long run. It's not something that will happen immediately. So reduction of waterborne diseases is something that maybe we can track for six months. Then we can report that indeed there is a, a reduction in waterborne diseases. Let me just, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Let me just allow someone to join. Let me just allow someone to join. Great. So now we move on. We come back to, to the inputs again. We now go to the object verifiable indicators. 
what are we going to be measuring exactly for us to confirm that we've achieved it or we haven't achieved it? How are we going to know that we failed or we've succeeded? It's an indicator. So this one here is showing existence of wells. It's an indicator that we can measure. Are we together? We want to be reporting on the existence of wells. So it means we can just count a number of wells constructed. Then we report on it that 10 wells were constructed in Vubu district. It's an indicator that we, that we are going to be tracking over time and reporting on that indicator. So now, something that I want to bring to your attention is that uh, setting up a fully functioning monitoring and evaluation system is very costly. And no wonder it is called a system, then it means it has got components working independently, but for a common purpose. Are we together? So setting up a fully monitoring and evaluation system is very costly. Just like I said, that for any project, but if you are dealing with projects, it's non-negotiable. M1 D is supposed to be there. If you are dealing with a policy, if you are dealing with a program, it's non-negotiable. M1 D is supposed to be embedded within your program or policy. And the minimum amount that you can allocate to, to monitoring and evaluation activity is supposed to be a minimum of 15% of your total budget. You see that this thing called monitoring and evaluation is very important. But now here's the thing. You may be in this institution where you may not have the capacity to develop the fully monitoring and evaluation systems. Someone wants to join, someone wants to join, someone wants to join, great. So you may be working in this institution where you may not have the capacity to build the fully working monitoring and evaluation system. So what will help you to call out the monitoring and evaluation activities are the indicators. The indicators will be very easy for you to keep tracking them and just reporting on the indicators rather than focusing on writing a detailed report. A detailed report may come at the end of the project or at the end of the policy. So what will help you to measure success along the way are the indicators here. Are we following class? Mm, so even as you are developing indicators, just ensure that you develop indicators that you can track and measure. Otherwise, it's possible for you to develop an indicator but you cannot measure that indicator because you cannot find information and then there are certain indicators where you can you may not be able to find information from central statistics that an indicator may require you to do an actual survey and doing an actual survey is quite is quite expensive so you need to weigh all those things that's why if you can remember very well when we are dealing with the indicators, we said that something that is going to info, something that is going to prompt you to go for an indicator, it will depend on the source, uh, information available. Is there data available for that particular indicator? If data is available, then well and good. How much of the resources do you have? If you don't have much, then you shouldn't go for that indicator. That would be difficult for you to measure. Are the stakeholders going to use the information on this indicator if they are not going to use the, that information on the indicator? And we ourselves as an organization, we don't intend to use that indicator. Then that indicator will be relevant to be included in this framework when we cannot use it at the end of the day. So it means it will just be the sheer waste of money and uh, time to collect information and measure the indicator, which we cannot even use to make decisions. Number three, are the donors going to use these indicators? If they, uh, no, sorry, number four, if the donors do not have any use for that indicator, and we ourselves, as an as an organization, we don't, we are not going to use that that indicator. And the government, let's say the government who may be the stakeholder is also not going to use that indicator. Then it means it will be relevant for us to include that indicator. So we move on to outputs. Who can lead for us? Who can lead for us? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's just pick the entire... No, no, no. We are still under the inputs here. 
So we've said that we are going to be measuring the, the existence of the wells. That's an indicator. Where are we going to get the information? How? How are we going to be getting the, the information from the village? Okay, you, 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 you sounded very well, though where are you going to do the survey is actually at a high level. We are still looking at the existence of the wells. Have you seen the means of verification? So it means we can confirm that indeed there are wells existing in Vubwi through the pictures that were taken after the completion of the wells. Then the videos can be recorded. And this point and this is done at a point of implementation. When you're doing your monitoring, you are going to record, okay, 12 balls constructed, then you can take pictures, you can also record videos. So that is going to be the source of information. So for the inputs, you may not necessarily need to do a survey. This is information that you can get internally. Remember, we said that the use of monitoring is that to act as a, as an input for evaluation so the same information that we are going to be collecting as we are doing the implementation as we are constructing the balls it can be used for us to come and evaluate and measure indicators so we we'll just go to our records how many balls did we construct then we can report on that that 50 balls were constructed in six months then we can show pictures then we can show videos where wells have been built exactly are we together Then the important assumption here, I said that an important assumption is something that, in, that may affect your input, your output, your purpose, your goal. Yes, sir, you can proceed. I can hear you, sir, I can proceed. Hello, sir, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear you, so I can proceed with the question, sir. Are you ex... Okay. Oh, you have... Okay. Mm. I can hear you, sir. You're asking that, huh? Can we have an output for a different program and an input? Yes, it's possible. It is possible, very much possible. Can you hear me, sir? For instance, here when we talk about uh, when we talk about that wells have been constructed, it's only when we've constructed wells that another activity can start from here. Remember, this is just a single project. It means it's centered on one thing. But now let's assume that we are in a program and we said that a program is a, a combination of projects. So you can have multiple projects under the same program. So it's possible that the output here may lead to an activity in, a, in another project, but within the same program. Are we together? Exactly. So now we so for the key assumptions I said that it will be that assumption that is going to affect your inputs. That's why you can see that for all the rows that I have, starting from the goal, purpose, outputs, inputs, I've got the corresponding assumptions. However, it doesn't mean that every time you can have an assumption here. There are times where you may not 
have an assumption then it means that column or that cell or that box is going to remain blank you don't have to force yourself to state assumptions everywhere if there is nothing that may affect your goal any you better leave it blank because we can't force it we can't just manufacture things no so here i will lead the assumption so the assumption is that funds can be raised to purchase materials in other words without us raising funds we cannot purchase construction materials we cannot hold the basic hygiene workshops because for us to do this we need money so in other words something somewhere should happen we should raise money somewhere for us to do the purchase of construction material and to hold the basic hygiene workshops that's what it means when you talk about an important assumption then can I have someone to lead for us under the narrative summary what the output is and what the objectively verifiable indicator is exactly and what's the indicator and what's the indicator exactly so let me just explain so it means we want to be tracking the availability of improved order and that's an indicator we are just going to be reporting on this indicator so remember when you start filling out your m1d plan which i shared with you i shared the components and we've covered almost 90 percent of the components in an m1d plan you are going to state how frequent you are going to be reporting on that indicator is it after three months is it after six months so if you say i'll be reporting on this indicator after six months right after six months i have to collect information on the availability of improved water and report on this so maybe i can say 80 percent of the people in the in the community are having access to the quality water from the constructed wells maybe let's say the best one was that 20 people were having access today or were having access to quality water but now it has changed now it's eight percent then as a project we can confidently say that we are moving in the right direction are we together so you can proceed sir where are we going to get information how are we going to confirm that indeed improved water is available for the villagers in communities means of verification how are we going to confirm yes you can proceed exactly 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 so now madam we can now come to the point where you talked about the survey so here of course at the point of monitoring videos will be recorded showing that uh, people are having access to quality water pictures will be taken but it's also another thing to go just right in the community to confirm do you like the water that you are now accessing because videos of course they'll show that people are drawing water from the wells but another question is that is the same water of good quality so we want to confirm from the people themselves in the society or in the community that i need we like this water from the wells so that's why we can do a survey or maybe it could be the focus group discussions or maybe it could be interviews and so on and so forth depending on the resources available at that particular point in time who dictate the kind of study that we are going to go for then what could be the important assumption that may affect the output exactly so it means if these people they don't what will happen <coughs> if elders if these people are called the village elders says no what will happen to our output there will be no construction exactly you are very much right sir thank you so much so we can move on to to the go now can i have someone a female to lead for us
Hello, can I have someone to read for us for the, the purpose here, which is a go? Otherwise, difficult here. Biaoja, Ginyo. Yes, class, I can see that we are about the eight of us. Other people have dropped. Okay, we can proceed. We can proceed. Who can lead for us, Mr. Flank? Okay. Okay. You start on the purpose here. You on the purpose, which is an outcome. You read for us exactly. You read for us exactly. Then what could be the indicator? Which is okay. Yes. Okay. Mm hmm. Exactly. So it means we want to keep a track of these things. Are these things increasing or reducing? It's an indicator. We know what an indicator is, right? It's something that will be guiding you, isn't it? If a guy, if you see someone indicating to the right side, then what will come in my mind is that this person is turning to my is going to the right side. That's what an indicator shows. It guides someone. In the same manner, even the indicators that are here, they should be able to speak to us. They should guide us whether or not we are moving in the right direction. You can proceed, Mr. Flank. How are we going to confirm that indeed there is reduction in ginworm, behausia, dilea, and other autoborne diseases? Where are we going to get information? How are we going to confirm? Exactly. 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 So it means we are going to go to the clinics, we collect the information, then we aggregate this information, then we are going to confirm our indicator that indeed there has been reduction. And we know when we go to the clinic, if you are sick, if you've been diagnosed with diarrhea, they will ask you, where have you been drawing water? especially during the cholera outbreak, they'll ask you those questions. Then they'll be recording on a daily basis the number of uh, diarrhea cases recorded. So it means we can always walk into a local clinic, collect the statistics, then try to do some form of analysis. Then it means the, in the indicator is going to be measured. Then what could be the key assumption here, Mr. Frank? Mr. Frank, what could be the key assumption? So the key... Yes, sir. Exactly. 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 So we now move on to the, to the goal here. So the overall goal, which is improve the health of the villagers in rural communities. The objective will be improvements in village residents' health. So we now want to track and be reporting on the health of the villagers in these communities. Are we together, class? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Mm-hmm. It, 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 is, it is indeed wide. That's why this project is also quite wide. Exactly, exactly. So it's wide. Even the project is quite, quite wide. And that's why it's covering the entire community. So you're talking about the goal is to improve the health of the villagers. And in fact, when you look at this one, it means this particular project is only focused on water in then we know that it's not water alone which can improve the health of the community. Then it means there could be another project, another project, another project, but we are just specifically focused on this project alone. So it could be to be a program which is going to have multiple projects, but all these projects have got a common purpose or a common goal, which is 
improving the health of the villagers and rural communities. Exactly. So here the indicator that we are going to be reporting on is improvements in the village residents' health. Where are we going to get information? How are we going to confirm that indeed there is change in the health of the village residents? It means we can, comp we can compute life expectancy, which is simply the number of years someone is expected to live from the time they are born, taking into consideration the age-specific rates and also the mortality conditions. Are we together, class? Life expectancy, the number of years. We know that right now in Zambia, the life expectancy for men stands at 49 and for women, it stands at 51. Then on average, for both female and, and, uh, and male, it stands at 50. That's the, uh, the life expectancy. In other words, someone in Zambia is expected to live up to 49 years. However, that's life expectancy at birth. Then it means it's possible that someone can compute can compute for me my life expectancy from today. So it means if I'm aged 30 now, then if they tell me that I'm likely to live 50 more years, and it means I'll add 50 plus the 30 years that I have now, for instance, and it means my life expectancy will go to 80 years. Are we together, class? That's how life expectancy is. I know that people usually mis misinterpret what life expectancy is. The one that Central Statistics reports on is the life expectancy at birth from the time when someone is born. But there's also the life expectancy at each age. It means I can compute the life expectancy for someone who's age 70. So if I compute that the life expectancy for the person who's age 70 is 10 years, so it means 70, the years that they have lived already, plus that 10 years, and it means the life expectancy for that particular individual is estimated to be 8 years. It's an estimate, it's not the actual figure, because it's possible that someone may die tomorrow. It's possible that... Someone was told that you are going to die tomorrow, but they end up living 20 more years. So that's why it's an estimate, it's an average. But all in all, it will give us the actual, the actual figures. And what is computed tends to become true. Because when computing the life expectancy, it's quite complicated. And there are a lot of things that are considered. For instance, we know that men are more likely to be driving or to be working in harsh conditions as compared to women. So all those conditions are supposed to be integrated in the computation. No wonder you see that the life expectancy for a woman is always higher than the life expectancy of that, the life expectancy of a man, because men tend to drink a lot. For instance, we know that even women do drink, but for, for men, you see that the proportion is quite on the higher side. Given the activities which men get engaged in, they will be quite dangerous as compared to, to females. When, we, when, when you go into mines, you see that most people go underground, they are men. For females, they just work in managerial jobs. So the probability of someone dying is high for those who's going underground as compared to someone who's seated in the office. So all those things are considered for life expectancy to be computed. We need to compute the probability of someone dying at each age. So for us to be able to confirm that indeed there is improvement in the health of the resident, we must see that ex life expectancy is increasing. We we'll look at child and infant mortality. Infant mortality, that's why we are looking at deaths for, for those people that are aged between zero, uh, less than one, age one. Zero to one year, that's infant and child mortality is from zero up to five years. Number of number or work days missed due to heal health. Maybe it could be previously. Most people from the uh, I mean most workers were missing work due to health issues. So now we can also track this and measure who how many people are missing work due to heal health. If we used to record in a week average of about 10 people missing work due to heal health. Now we are having the average of two people missing work per week, then we can confirm that indeed there is improvement in the health of the villagers.
Then an important assumption would be that reduction of waterborne disease is a major factor in general health. So it means without waterborne diseases reducing, then it means we cannot achieve our goal. So that's why we are putting it, we are putting this there as a key assumption. So this is how we flame the logical framework. It's very simple. What we are just supposed to understand are those headings on top. Narrative summary, the indicator, what are we going to be measuring exactly? How are we going to be confirming our indicator? In other ways, how are we going to be getting the information? Then the important assumption. Then you fill out your table like that. It may be quite detailed if you just start doing it uh, from the practical point of view. But what's key is for you to know what is supposed to be in each column here. We must know what is supposed to be there. Any questions before we can proceed on the logical framework? It's very simple. Hand questions? Okay, great. Mr. Frank, any questions? No, we can move on. Mad Madam Venzumlea, how is Kabwe? It's cool now. Great, great. Zambia is changing. It's becoming like uh, as if you are in America, Las Vegas, you know. <laughs> okay, we can move on. Me, me. Is it Mr. <laughs> That's super. We want Zambia to be like that. We don't want it to be like Akla, Ghana. The temperature there is it's on the higher side. <laughs> Is it Mr. Tsulo or Madam Tsulo? I don't know which one. Any questions? Oh, okay, okay. So so we, we, we can move on now. I'm sure we covered the logic models together, right? Exactly. So just a leak up. Just, just a leak up. So in the same manner we defined what a logical framework is where we said that this shows the linear relationship flowing from the inputs processes which are activities outputs outcomes all the way to the impact so it means given the logical model we are going to show the same linearity of how things will flow starting from the resources that we have into the strategies which are now specific actions or rather activities the immediate results that we are going to get, then what we are going to get in the middle, which will now eventually take us to the overall goal. In the same manner, the logical model also shows the same, which is a diagram that identifies and illustrates the linear relationship from the flowing from program inputs, processes, outputs, and outcomes. Inputs or resources affect processes or rather activities which will now produce immediate results, which are outputs. How to make leading to longer term or broader results, which are outcomes. And then outcomes will now ultimately culminate into a goal. That's all about a logic model. So this is what the logic model is. So here at the input, we are going to, to show what do we need exactly. We need human capital. We need financial resources. Once we have financial resources, then we are going to say, using the resources and the human capital that we have, we are going to educate men and women about the advantages of uh, modern meth now modern contraceptives. We are also going to distribute family planning, not methods, because we can distribute methods, so this wasn't correct. Then we are also going to train program staff in providing family planning information and methods then once we have these activities once you've trained them once you've distributed the contraceptives once you've educated men and women the immediate results will be that sessions held held in community about family planning methods that's an output it's something that you are going to see immediately that sessions were held then there will be increased interest in family planning 
Then another thing will be that family planning methods, family planning distributed in communities. That's something that you can see right away, immediately. Clinic staff trend in family planning method and counseling. This is an output, something that you can even report on today after you've done, after you finished your, your workshop. Then an outcome will be that there will be increased access to contraceptive methods. Increased access is something that you can attain over time. It's not a one-day thing. I do agree that upon doing the sensitization, you, you might see that there's increase in demand or in access to contraceptive. But the question is that, have we sustained that thing? We can only say that there's increased access to contraceptive methods if we can sustain that over a period of time. Then that will now qualify to be an outcome. That's why you're talking about change in behavior or rather attitude. Then increased access to family planning. I mean to family planning counseling. This is an output. Increased number of new users of modern methods. Every time we are seeing people are now trying to access and are getting these modern methods. I mean modern contraceptive pills. And it's something that we sustained over a period of time. Then this is an outcome. Increased Every time when you use the word increased, just know that you're talking about an outcome. When you use the word improved, just know that you're talking about an outcome. Then also when you use the word access, it may be an outcome or an output, depending on how you've embedded your word access. Are we together, class? Then the impact... Okay, so saying that when you use the word increased, then it means we're talking about an outcome. I didn't say it's supposed to be always be increased, you know. I'm just trying to explain that if you use the word increased, improved, then just know that you're talking about an outcome. But that doesn't mean that every time you're using the word increased, maybe it could be reduced. It's an outcome. Reduced is something that will happen over time. Am I clear sir wonderful so this is all about the logic model it's very simple as when you look at this it's also similar to the logical framework but in the sense that in the logical framework we used to be we used to have inputs then we have indicators then we have the means of verification then we have important assumptions so it's possible also that even here we can have Input indicators, we can also have process indicators, we can have outcome indicators, we can have output indicators, then we can have impact indicators. Are we together? For instance, I can say that uh, the number of male participating in family planning decisions. This is an indicator that I can be tracking and I can be measuring. I mean, I can be reporting on this indicator. But the only difference is in, the, in this logical model is that here you are not showing us the means of verification so it means the means of verification is hidden here you don't have to show it are we together however others maybe towards the end after the impact maybe they might put sources so that they can just provide the clarity to someone who may join in as a project manager maybe if they say the project manager was fired or maybe it could be few staffs along the way have resigned then just to provide the clarity it might in include an extra column at the end where they just show sources central statistics this and this and this and this and this there is no problem in doing so are we together can i move on or are there questions on the logic model? Straightforward. <laughs> okay, that, that, that sounds good. So there are some organizations like USAID. Then they use the strategic framework, which is a result framework. It's prescribed. If you are getting a grant from them, they will tell you that 
we want you to design a result framework. Then if you get a grant from PEP for them, they use a logical framework. But if you're not getting any funding from anywhere, it's internally funded, then you're going to decide which one is going to work best for you. So you can choose either the logic model, the result framework, or the logical framework. You can only pick one. But for the conceptual framework, like I said, like it's non-negotiable, it's supposed to be there. Same applies. There's this theory of change which we are going to cover right away. I know we did this together in class, right? Exactly. So I'll just quickly go through it. So a fear of change just shows the steps that would be taken for us to, to achieve the goal, which is quite similar to the to the frameworks, right? Because even the, exactly. But now in the fear of change here, that's when we use the statements, which are if and then, are we together? If and then. So it means if resources are coming on time, then then activities will be conducted on time as well. Are we together? So we are using the if and then statement. If, if men have been sensitized about the importance of family planning, then there will be an increase in the number of males participating in family planning decisions at family level, at community level, as well as at national level. That's the language that we use when we are trying to write a theory of change. And as we may be aware, a theory of change is just simply the consolidation of ideas, or maybe rather just the composition of ideas which tries to explain the, the existence of a particular social phenomenon or a particular event. That's what a theory is. The combination of ideas. Then, there are two things about the theory of changes. Either you can do it diagrammatically or you can just do it in narrative form. There is no problem. But if you draw a diagram, it means you also need to add a little bit of the narration so that you can just, uh, in simpler terms, explain what the diagram is all about. So the theory of change divine, defines pieces and steps necessary to bring about a given long-term goal. So it is just showing us what we intend to do or how things will happen exactly to bring about a given long-term goal. If this happens, then this, this will read to this. If this happens, then this will read to this, and then eventually it will be that ultimate goal. It describes the types of interventions or steps that will, be, that will bring about the results opt for. It describes how and why a desired change is expected to happen in a particular way. List to better planning of intervention activities. Okay, this we looked at this. Then how to develop a theory of change. The first thing that you do is that you have to identify what the problem is. Others, they call problem identification. They will call it a need assessment. Are we together? Or others will call it a baseline. It's very important. I gave a very a very funny example in class. If you were if you were there, where I was saying that um, there's these people. They went to the community. They saw that people were drawing water from very far, about ten kilometers. So they thought that if we can bring water closer to the people, it will be of help to them. Without. Uh, doing a need assessment to ascertain whether those people they need that service, they went ahead, they constructed the balls. Hoping that people will be using the balls. One year later, they went back to do an evaluation to find out how the service holds to the people. Was it a good service or not? What they found there was very, very shocking. They discovered that actually, the balls were locked and people were going to the same uh, dams to go and draw water 10 kilometers away. 
So what they discovered at the end was that uh, these were um, people that were living in poverty. They didn't have much to construct these very, very expensive houses with quite a number of rooms. So they were just maybe living in a small roomed, in a small roomed house where they would just put a chitenge material here, their kids, then here are the parents. So the best, the best time when parents could enjoy as a couple is when they send kids to go and draw water from very far because someone walking 10 kilometers, just going to take them at least a minimum of 30 minutes, then coming back it also a minimum of 30 minutes. That's already an hour. So within that hour, it means the parents have enjoyed and they have closed the, the game. So that's what they discovered. So that's why at any point it's important for us to do a need assessment. We need to, to be certain that indeed this service is needed in this community. Otherwise, we might assume that this service is needed in this community when actually those people in the community, they don't, they don't need that service. So we need to identify what a problem is at community level, at national level. Once we do that, then we have to identify the possible causal factors to the problem. And this takes you back to the conceptual framework, right? If you can remember very well, yes, where we talked about that the conceptual framework will show the causal relationship between the factors and the problem. Then once you know what the factors are, then now you can identify what you want to achieve, the desired change. Then once you have a desired change, then you can develop an intervention or a solution. An intervention is quite similar to an activity. But an intervention is quite detailed. You see when we start looking at a school program, a school feeding program, which is an intervention. So an intervention may have activities inside. So that's the only difference. An intervention will have activities under it. Then once you develop interventions, then now you can develop the activities. What are we going to be doing exactly? Once you do that, then you are going to identify what your program outcome would be. Then from there, show causal links of activity to the outcome. Show how the activities will lead to the outcomes. Then once you do that, then you can identify your key assumptions, which is similar to the logical framework that we just covered, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yes, yes, I can hear you, madam. You can proceed with the question. Exactly. So the theory of change will be like this. Here there is agent of change and beneficiaries. Who are we targeting? Then there's a problem statement. What's a problem exactly? Then if there's an intervention. What are we going to do for us to solve the problem? Then what's the time frame for this intervention? We know that an intervention should have a terminal point. It shouldn't be something that should just keep on going and going and going and going and going. It should come to an end at some point. So let's pick this as an example. How to present a theory of change? A theory of change can be presented in a narrative form. I've already talked about this. So an example. A school, second, uh, a secondary school teacher is concerned with the poor performance of pupils at school. Full stop. What is the problem here? Poor performance, exactly. A local non-governmental comes on board to support this school to improve learners' performance through a feeding program. What is uh, wh what is the intervention here? Feeding program, right? Then what's the goal? Improve the performance of the learners. So now, we can show this. We want to develop a theory of change. Remember, we've just discussed that we need to identify the problem, right, as a starting point. So we know that the problem here is what? Poor performance. Then we need to identify the causal factor. So here, it seems like uh, looking at this example, the causal factor is that people, I mean, pupils are not having access to proper news. So that's why this and government organization is, is trying to now implement the feeding program. That's a causal factor. That's just an example that I'm giving. Then here, when I take you back here, you see that 
identify your program goal which is we want to reduce or improve performance then intervention we know that it's a feeding program that's an intervention then what could be our activities what are we going to do under the feeding program what are we going to do okay this is uh, an example here are you able to see this uh, fear of change exactly so the first thing here is starting with an assumption so i'll take you back here you see that identify your key assumptions here so there's this assumption here which is if all the required inputs for the for preparing of meals are readily available if that assumption is made this assumption is leading to what exactly so if this assumption is made then meals will be prepared in the right proportions so preparing meals this is an activity are we together right exactly then the output here is that pupils will eat the meals then also there is that once once meals are prepared then there will be increase in school attendance then here the outcome will be that there will be increased concentration in class then there's this arrow here which is pointing from my increased school attendance going to the improved performance you've seen that there's an assumption here right which is right learning materials and teachers are there to teach and pupils stroke learners understands it's one way thing to increase attendance in school and it's another thing to have uh, people who are qualified teaching the these kids who are attending school as well as right materials available for them so we are assuming that in as much as we've increased the attendance in school we must subject our kids to people who are qualified and we need to make sure that we give them the right learning materials otherwise without subjecting these kids to well qualified individuals or teachers and giving them right learning materials we cannot achieve our goal because this has got a direct impact on us achieving our goal then here as you can see the arrow here there is no arrow so there was supposed to be an arrow from the increased concentration in class leading to improved performance are we together class so this is how a theory of change can be presented in a diagrammatic format but if i wanted to to do a narration i would say if all the required inputs for the if all the required inputs which are then i can specify them are we together which are i'll specify them milli meal human resource then meals will be prepared in right proportion are you following me if meals are prepared in right proportions pupils will eat the meals comma there will be increase in school attendance full stop when people when pupils eat meals then there will be increased concentration in class are you following me very clearly exactly once or if concentration in class increases then there will be improved performance i've finished then i'll just come now to the second point if there's increase in school attendance taking into consideration that well qualified teachers and right materials are given to the pupils then there will be improved performance just from the way i'm narrating it is just an assumption i want to describe the pieces if i take you back to this definition of what a theory of change is to say the theory of change define the pieces and the steps necessary to bring about a given long-term goal 
So basis of what we've discussed on the school program, is this definition true about the theory of change or is the diagram true relating it to this definition? Have we answered or have we dissected what the definition is? the diagram and also the narration, right? I will invite questions at this point. What's the time? This is 22.32. I will invite questions. Any questions? No questions? What else is meaning to be covered? Indicators, right? Okay. Should we do this today or do it tomorrow? We can do it, right? Sorry? We can do it tomorrow, okay. So we are going to, we are going to leave indicators for for tomorrow's class, so we'll have class at exactly 21 hours tomorrow, just for about 30, 30 minutes. We should be able to cover everything about indicators. Okay, so thank you so much for finding time to...